Hello. Let's unmute the correct mic. Uh, welcome to Unrestricted Lorefare. I'm your host, uh, Lichmaster98, or some of you may better know me as uh, Xavier from the Unrestricted Lorefare community. I hope uh, everyone has had a fantastic last month, as it's been a little bit uh, of a longer month uh, this time before we've come back to a um, to a stream. Oh, it looks like my uh, little picture has not shown up. Let's see if we can fix that. Test one, two. There we go. Okay. Well, with some of the technical difficulties out of the way, uh, we're starting stream today. Let's um, let's have a fantastic faction turn twelve. I hope everyone had uh, if you're from the U.S. a nice Labor Day weekend last week, and uh, is having a a respectful day uh, remembering those uh, who lost their lives uh, on 9/11 20 years ago. But um, as important as that is for U.S. history, we won't dwell on it too much in our sci-fi world today. But Given we're streaming today, I felt it important to at least acknowledge and mention um, on stream. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you're new here and you don't know what's going on, welcome to Beacon, Beacon Space. It's a sci-fi world set within um, the far future in which um, there are a number of factions that are competing for influence and um, in terms of exploration throughout the stars. As you can see, uh, to, uh, I guess mostly in the center of your screen, the map uh, is back. It was down uh, about a week ago if you were on the Discord server. Um, it was undergoing some maintenance that required it to be offline for a few days, but the map is back, um, hopefully better than ever. So uh, we, we have this lovely visualization tool again. And of course, we have the classic uh, spreadsheet where everything is uh, always truthful and never mistakes are made, I'm sure. But um, yeah, if you're interested more about the lore of the world, you can check out our wiki at beacons, uh, beaconspace.unrestrictedlorefare.com, which has a bunch more information there. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with the faction turn today. And we get started with the resolution of the Telus Terra group vote. Uh, so last month, it was placed up for proposal with an exploratory prioritization number two, in which factions needed to select between moving the removing the faction credit penalty for moving into an unexplored hexes for the next two turns, or advancing the terraforming clock by one. The uh, results of that vote are six votes for option one, removing the faction credit penalty, one vote for option two, excuse me, one vote for option two, and two factions abstaining from the vote. Uh, the results of this will be written in text form in the Discord server slightly after the stream ends today, so um, it'll be in text form there. So uh, with that, I believe I have appropriately updated everybody's faction turns so that I'm only charging them uh, for movement, if applicable, uh, when moving into a point of interest rather than just the additional fee. Uh, so. If um, if that is missed on one one of your orders, please contact me after the stream, and we'll make sure that your faction credit gets returned to you if it should have been. With that, let's go ahead and get started uh, with the first faction today, being the Children of the Vein. Now, I don't think I appropriately added two columns yet, so let's actually do that. And this would be... Oh, I needed one more column. There weren't any trades, but uh, for completion, I'll keep the column. I'll turn 12 order, and then turn 12 actions. Great. So first today, as I just mentioned, is uh, the Children of the Vein, so let's find them. Here they are. Oh, they were quite near the bottom of this uh, filtered list. So they're going to be taking the exploration action and then we'll gain an income of seven faction credits. So let's go uh, give them their money and then take care of their actions. So their balance uh, gaining seven faction credits goes up to 34 faction credits. 
and then they're going to be exploring on uh, the point of interest that is um, hex 39 or point of interest 39 at hex 1004. Uh, the DC there is a difficulty of 10, and they're rolling with a force asset because they have a strike fleet, so they get a plus 6, as that is their uh, force stat. So 1004, if we take a look, is right here. It's one hex away from a explored hex, so yes, difficulty 10. And I forgot to have a tab open, so give me just a moment as I hide the Chrome window so that I can open a roll 20 window that I missed in my... Uh, tabs before setting this up. Um, and then I want to clear the current chat log so I don't accidentally show the, uh, great, don't want to accidentally show the invite link. So, as we get started today, this is going to be a d10 plus 6 roll which the roll needs to be higher than 10. It is not, it is only an eight, so that is a failure. However, they they have chosen to succeed at cost, so they will take 1d4 damage to the strike fleet. Let's see how much damage they're going to take. Uh, oof, maximum damage of four against the strike fleet that is in this system. So let's go find that strike fleet of theirs right here, and it is down to two HP. They do, however, still succeed at their exploration, so we need to roll a d6 to see how many planets they've discovered. A5 is quite a few planets, I believe that is two. They're getting very lucky with the number of planets they've discovered on almost all of their attempts, I believe. So on the planet map, let's come down here to 1004. Let me go ahead and, yes, I know, I'm, I'm breaking the sheet in ways the sheet doesn't want to be broken, that's fine. So let's go ahead and roll these two planets. Uh, let me figure out the planet name, which hopefully is up to date on this. A, S, A, B, C, D. Yes, A, S, and then this one would be planet A, T. And then it would be A, U. That's uh, the next planet after that. Let's go use our fancy planet macro and roll up a planet. Wow, this looks like a pretty decent planet. Let's uh, let's see. It's um, let me type it in over to the sheet. Oh, so just one second. All right, perfect. So planet AS has the mechanics tag of starship assets, cost one less faction credit, with a tens of millions of population. It's TL four, with a airless atmosphere that is temperate and has a missable biosphere along with the faction tags of theocracy and mandarinate um great and i'm gonna go ahead and roll the second planet and transfer it into the sheet and then i'll uh pull it over so everyone can take a look at the result this one says once per turn can reroll a faction generating asset um so long as such ability exists on the planet it has a tens of millions population, however, this one is TL0 with a inert atmosphere that is cold and uh, a microbial biosphere along with the tags of local tech, interesting, for TL0, along with immortal, uh, also interesting for TL0. So we'll, uh, here we go, you can take a look at both of those. Neither of them rolled a high enough ruin to actually develop one, which would have required a 20, so no no new ruins, uh, unfortunately, but two new interesting planets. So, um, we would have to fix the location of the Children of the Veins strike fleet, which is now on a spot that no longer exists. However, they are moving said strike fleet onto a new planet uh, after this, so we will just take care of that move for them. They are going to be moving to planet AQ, which is costing them one faction credit to activate the strike fleet, bringing them down to 33 faction credits. This does complete their goal of exploration, so we'll give them their XP, bringing them up to nine, and that wraps up their turn. We'll move right along to Ascent, who is second this turn. 
they're going to be taking the goal of planetary seizure and then we'll receive some money. So let us go give them their money, bringing them up to 33 faction credits as well. Looks like we have two factions there, at least temporarily. They are taking the refit asset um, action, which allows them to uh, change an asset type into a new one. So they are going to be refitting the tripwire cells, which are currently located on 1405. Uh, right here, this asset. As a special forces asset, it can refit into any uh, special forces asset uh, that exists. So the, uh, the Ascent has chosen to refit this asset into a seditionist. So if we take a look over here and find the um, current I object of a tripwire cells right here, uh, it's a cunning four. It is worth 12 faction credits. It's being refit into seditionists, which are cunning four, and also worth 12 faction credits. It is TL0, so there's no issues about this being performed on any world. And um, one of the fun quirks of refit asset is the HP of the asset is restored, I believe, so long as it's not um, empty. Oh, excuse me, so long as it's not at zero, as the bolt holes and refit action uh, combination there. So, because that's not the case here, uh, the tripwire cells transform into seditionists. Uh, this cost is free, and they get their HP back. Perfect. With that out of the way, at a cost of zero faction credits. The smuggler's asset also on this world will now pick up said new seditionist, which I believe her purchase sickness um, uh, from the refit action, uh, and relocate both of themselves to planet Z. Oops. So let's uh, take care of that. And they have both moved uh, at the cost of one faction credit from the action of the smugglers. So that takes Ascent it back down to 32 faction credits. They also complete their seize of planet uh, V, um, which will now officially need to be renamed uh, at their request. So planet V, located right here, is now, ca now called Baros, um, but uh, for those of you who make text copies of the sheets, I do apologize as their spelling is, um, maybe there we go, is not just how we would pronounce the word in English, B-A-R-O-S. It is in fact has um, other special characters in it that I do not know the appropriate names for. So I apologize to all of you who have to write this out in text. Uh, for hilarious help, I will paste the spelling in, into uh, the Twitch chat. So uh, there you go. <laughs> um, they did not give me a name for the systems. The system name will remain as is for now, but um, they're welcome to update that in the future should they wish to uh, over this next turn. Uh, if it gets past that, we'll have a longer discussion about it. Uh, so Ascent completed that goal, bringing them up to 10 experience, and we'll move right along to the next faction, which is the Starlit Court. They will be gaining 4 uh, income this turn, so let's go ahead and give that to them, um, bringing them up to 8, so they're no longer the poorest uh, faction currently on the board. But uh, that's alright. Sometimes you don't need money to get everything done. Oop. Let's go ahead and paste in their turn. They're going to be taking the exploration action as well. So let's um, go ahead and take care of this. So their first thing they're going to do is move a smuggler's asset that is currently located on um, a currently floating in space, as starship assets can do, and they're going to move this to 1016, which is still in space. So uh, the map is not going to like this, unless you give me just a moment. They were here, right? 10.06? Okay. Now hopefully we won't break the map live. 
Uh, sorry, it was 10, 1, 6. Oop. Perfect. Um, which would be located... 10, 1, 6 is uh, definitely wrong, because uh, that's way down here, I believe, right? Oh, no, it's this asset. Oh, they have a smuggler's asset way over here. I wasn't aware of that. Huh, cool. But this one can't actually move that far. I thought they were thought that was the one over here I was moving. Oops. Um. Yes, because they do have a second uh, smuggler asset that they were moving. My my bad. I thought I was in the wrong section of the map there. But that's a valid move, so that's good. Uh, that cost them one faction credit, which we'll charge in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move their second smuggler asset that I was just talking about so that I don't forget it in just a moment. Uh, so the smuggler's asset... Uh, well, I suppose the smuggler's asset moves after it explores, so... Uh, okay, the smuggler's not exploring, it's the strike fleet. I... You know, Roman numerals was a great idea until they all look very similar at quick glance. Uh, so this this asset can actually move to space again uh, into the hex 0900, which is definitely going to break the map unless I uh, do this. And I heard I heard charm, but I missed what what happened. Uh, Thank you for the subscription, Dungeon Cowboy. We appreciate it. You have access to, uh, I guess, one emote, because that's all we have right now, of the Unrestricted Lore Fair logo. Hopefully we'll have more in the future. But, okay, that should fix that. Great. Uh, that cost two faction credits, bringing them down to six. Perfect. Uh, now they're going to explore the with a strike fleet, and they have a force bonus of four into the hex at 1702. 1702 is right over here. It's one hex away, so this is a difficulty 10 roll. So a d10 plus four versus dc10. Ouch. Uh, that is a five. That is not going to succeed. A succeed at cost, however is their request. So taking a d4 of damage with, man, I am not rolling well for the rolls, but rolling high on damage. This strike fleet does take four damage. All right, so let's take this right here down to two. And I should appropriately note this. D10 plus four equals five. Succeed at cost of D4 equals 4 damage. Perfect. Let's go uh, create this hex then for them. On the planet map, it is 1702. A D6 to figure out how many planets they have. A 4 is, I believe, 2. I believe that is 2. I think it's 4, 5 is 2. Uh, yes, it is. Great. So, 1702 is not going to have two planets in it. Quit bothering me about uh, the spreadsheet. I'll try not to break it. And so this is planet AU. The next one is planet... V? AV? Yeah, AV is next. And then over here... is aw just so i have the notes great so planet au which i guess is not an alternate universe uh in this case is a pretty interesting one let's take care of moving it over to this sheet so it has a mechanics tag of wealth assets deal one additional damage on uh, successful attacks or counter attacks with an uncolonized population that must have previously been TL4+, plus, uh, with a th thick atmosphere, 
that is burning in temperature with a remnant biosphere along with the tags of ritual combat and uh, xenophobes out of a uncolonized planet. Quite interesting. Uh, the ruin roll was only an 8, so no ruin on that planet. The other planet in this system, planet AV, has the tag that force assets built on this world cost one less HP with the billions of people uh, that are TL4. They have a corrosive and invasive atmosphere with a variable cold uh, temperature along with the microbial biosphere and the tags of pretech cultists and cyborgs. Perhaps they're studying the other planet in the system? Uh, we will have to find out. Ruin's role there is only a 16, so no ruin, um, unfortunately, in that regard either. Here are, here's that second role on stream for transparency there. With the exploration out of the way, let's uh, go ahead and relocate the strike fleet that is currently sitting in no man's land now. Um, on to planet a u perfect and that uh that takes care of that the one last thing uh for their turn uh, before we award them experience is they have a smuggler's asset that is located at um well is now located uh here and in, in zero nine zero zero was previously in this location here at 1101. So we'll go ahead and hopefully refresh the page. That may have been a mistake. We'll find out. Uh, nope, it's just going to take a moment to load. May have been a mistake, but regardless, this map is now here. So uh, it's good. And we'll figure out why that broke in a moment. Uh, so they're going to be taking their quest action to do the location of the Grail Pig. They're going to spend three faction credits to add a plus three to this roll. They're willing to take 1d2 damage on the smuggler to add a plus one. And their distance bonus from the last place they searched for their holy world uh, gives them a plus four. All together, that's a plus eight on this d10 versus a roll of a dc12. So d10, d10 plus eight has resulted in a 16, so that is a success on that roll. Let's uh, make a note of that. D10 plus 8 equals 16 success. So they'll get some information from me regarding that. Let's go charge them their three faction credits and take that one damage, or that two damage, D2 of damage, which is two. That's the way I've been rolling on damage today. So the smuggler asset in Zero nine zero zero now only has two HP, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. So we need to charge them their three faction credits, bringing them down to three, and then give them their XP, bringing them up to six, and that's that. Great, we'll move right along, since that took a little bit of time, to the Amalhart Institute, who is fourth this turn. They are taking the Seas Planet goal and action. Let's go give them their five dollars, uh, bringing them up to 44 credits. They're going to be starting a Seas. Uh, that's going to be of one out of three on this turn, as they are seizing the planet of uh, AK. It does require them to move an asset there, but that's uh, they'll be doing so in just a moment. That movement is going to cost them one faction credit, bringing them down to 43. And we're going to go move the Amalhart Institute, um, let's see here, uh, commodities broker using a covert shipping asset as the movement. So the commodities broker that is currently located on Ingrid, uh, which is this one right here, is going to be moving to planet AK. 
which is a valid movement of their asset. Let's see if the map has uh, managed to fix the asset placements. No. OK. Uh, something broke with the changes. I'll, I'll fix it. In, in the meantime, we'll be able to continue without it. Not a problem. That is the start of their turn. They got their seize credit uh, as there was nobody on this planet to oppose. Um, so let's uh, let's move on to the assembled Commonwealth. Who are, uh, let's see, fifth this turn. Here they are, five. Uh, as they start their turn, they're going to be leveling up, taking their force um, to a six at the cost of 12 XP. So the assembled Commonwealth becomes a six, three, six, bringing them down to zero XP. Excuse me, it does not change their income, so they still get only six faction credits, bringing them up to 32 credits. They are not taking a goal this turn, and they are using the use asset ability action. So the first thing is they're going to use the ability of an asset on Iderast, the um, pre-tech logistics asset, to uh, build an extended theater on Iderast. The pre-tech logistic makes assets cost one more, um, or 1.5 times the base cost. So the Assembled Commonwealth is buying an extended theater asset general, oops, extended theater generally. This would cost, uh, as you can see right here, 10 faction credits. But as that is um, being built with pre-tech in infantry, it costs 15 faction credits. Uh, and this is being built on Iderast. So let's go make that purchase, bringing them down to 17 faction credits. They're then going to use the an asset ability of a, a the extended theater that is on Menkaraniti already to move this newly built extended theater asset, which has a uh, purchase sickness on it, to N Menkaraniti. So takes care of this movement, and then um. That costs one faction credit, bringing them down to a total of 16. Then they are going to roll all three of their commodities brokers. One, two, and three. Uh, which apparently were noted to have discounts. So the purchase on that they just used uh, shouldn't have cost 15. One second, it should have cost only seven. Or sorry, only five. You can go down to half the original cost of the asset, and this is a total discount of like 14. Yeah, okay. Let me go give them their 10 faction credits back and then remove that. So they should have 26. Um, uh, their notes to me did not remind me that they had a discount, uh, and I did not catch it until just now as I went to reroll for the new assets. So that's fun, but cool. Uh, well, guys, you, you've stolen all the good rolls. Um, they have totally, they've, they've almost rolled the maximum discount they could on three commodities brokers, giving themselves a total 23 discount uh, for the next time they wish to purchase an asset. Uh, is there even an asset they could that you could buy that would actually use the appropriate discount here without losing some of it? I don't know. They will find out. They are then going to activate a Harvesters that is located on Moss. Uh, a Harvester asset needs to make some roll. Uh, it is a D6 on a 3 plus. They gain one faction credit. Let's see what this D6 says. Um, that is a 3, so that is one faction credit, bringing them up to 23. Or, sorry, 27. That was the wrong roll. Uh, the Agumala Syndicate does not get their faction credit as much as the Agumala Syndicate may have liked to steal it. <laughs> um, uh, the other thing for the Assembled Commonwealth is as an update on their quest. They are uh, they were asked which side of the Civil War, the pre logistics asset that actually just built an extended theater, uh, is supporting. They have chosen for it to support the Royalists, giving that side a total of three black dice uh, for their pool. Um, 
this uh, does require the asset to take 1d2 damage as uh, more, su more support joins the royalist, and uh, I'm sure underground movements uh, are not happy about this. So the uh, pre-tech logistics asset takes 1 damage, bringing it down to 5 out of 6 HP. Uh, the next asset for them to join the royalist side when they are asked uh, would take, I believe it goes up to a d4's worth of damage, or they have the option to pay credits instead. With that, we'll move right along, speedily along, to the next uh, faction of the Tahora Y, who have uh, some fun requests for me this turn. They are not taking a goal, but they are gaining five incomes, and they are seizing a planet. I'm actually going to extend this a little bit. So, let's go through this uh, right away here and give them their five income. Uh, that would be over here on this tab, taking them up to a total of 19 faction credits. Then they are going to be seizing the planet of AN, which I believe they are the only ones on. Um, let's find it in this list. Yep, they are the only ones on, so they can make this seize unopposed. Uh, let's go note their progress on that, just so that I don't forget. Seize planet AN, one out of three. There we go. Uh, perfect. They are then, uh, as part of the seize action, taking the... Uh, a, a requisite attack action or an attack action that they can take on the planet of Telus. Their new uh, blockade fleet asset has uh, chosen to attack the Starlet Court on this world. There are no Starlet Court assets located on Telus uh, at this point in time, uh, so the attack action is invalid. Uh, when I informed the Starlet Court of this attack, uh, I was told, uh, and let me make sure that I don't mess this up because the quote is uh, important. I was told that uh, the Tahora Y missed uh, our battleship. So um, just so everyone's aware, it was a, a miss, miss on that planet. With that uh, out of the way though, we will see what happens next. Okay. Uh, let me check my notes. Perfect. Uh, so they're now going to activate a strike fleet on hex 212 to move to the point of interest uh, in 0012. Um, so let's see, 0, 02, 0212. Right here, the strike fleet is moving in to the point of interest at 0012. Perfect. That cost one faction credit, bringing them down to 18. And then uh, previously on their last turn, they had discovered a ruin on planet AN. So if we come in here and find planet AN, we'll discover that it has a ruin on it. They are choosing to attempt to explore this ruin. And there was some interesting information at the last lore stream about this. So ruins, uh, since we've only done this once before, uh, here's a reminder. There's a D10 roll plus faction credit spend if applicable. They have chosen not to spend faction credits. That determines whether how much success occurs. So let's just go roll this flat D10 roll for them. We've rolled a three, which is a failure, no gain on the, the ruin clock. Uh, but I will still provide some... Uh, some lore uh, to the Tahora Y about the uh, failure of an exploration progress. So let's make note of that. Uh, D10 equals three failure. So maybe we'll be able to hear something interesting, uh, even though that wasn't very successful. They are choosing to expand their constellation to add a new hex into it, um, along with some blank space. Uh, so zero to they're adding the new planet uh that they've just moved an asset onto of zero to eleven 
and then 0, 1, 0, 1, 11 for some blank space. And then if we extend this, oops, uh, they are going to be adding, uh, to the left is fine actually, they are also going to be adding, there we go, so that's not a problem, 0, 0, 12. That moves their bonus up to 5. Uh, I'll have to fix this. Counting. That should do that, though. Great. Um, and then they are going to rename this constellation to something I'm uh, going to have to ask how to pronounce of the pig. Gorangi, Ote uh, I'm sure I mispronounced some part of that, but there you go. And then they're going to try to establish a research base on planet AN. Um, a research base is an easy thing to add. Uh, it is only a difficulty eight. So this is a D10 roll plus five to see if they can succeed against DC eight. Uh, a 12 easily succeeds, so let's go add that um, to the sector objects, and this is on planet AN. Uh, they have added a research base, which they have politely given me a name for. So this is Relics Harbor. It is occupied by secret employees of a foreign power and is performing perilous research. Uh, so that's great. They have also asked me to roll to add an occupied and a situation to this asteroid belt in the new Santara sector of theirs um, from when it was discovered. So if we take a look in asteroid belt, we'll roll two D10s and then determine uh, that results from here. So two D10, uh, they are both a three. So we have uh, an ancient automated guardian drones with foreign spy ships hiding there in uh, the asteroid belt in the new Centaur system. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll have to see what, uh, what this means for the world at large in the near future. But that uh, does resolve their turn, and we move right along to the Algomala Syndicate's faction turn in seventh this turn, as they go seventh here. They have a much shorter turn than the ones we just saw, as they are expanding influence onto planet K, which has no opposition, so it is uh, an easy expansion, costing them one faction credit. They'll do so after they gain five faction credits, and then they'll complete their goal. It's uh, a wonderfully easy turn, and all we have to do is go add a uh, base of influence for them. So we'll bring their balance up to 26, which is plus 5 and then minus 1. We'll go ahead and give them this one experience before we go add this base of influence on planet K for them. Uh, I'm going to sort this again, and then that way I can just add it right in by their list. Perfect. It is another base of influence for the Akamala Syndicate. It has a star cost. All of these just so that it fills correctly. Thank you. Yep, it's going to have one HP and this is on planet K. Perfect. That is their turn complete, and we'll move right along on to the Larkspur Combine, who were eighth this turn. They are taking the buy asset action to purchase a strike fleet on Moss uh, using their discount due to a TTGI event, so it will only cost them six faction credits in total. So let's uh, give them their additional money here of um, Larkspur Combine gets five income. They'll bring them up to 31. A strike fleet is going to cost them six, so they'll go down to 25. And uh, let's go add that right here for them. 
So Lexper Combine purchasing a new strike fleet, which cost originally 12. The discount takes that down to six, um, half cost. They have it stealthed as they are secretive as a faction. And this is present on Moss. That that takes care of their uh, their purchases. With them out of the way, we'll move right along to last but certainly not least the Concord of Mutual Disdain, who are taking the exploration action. They're going to be gaining twelve, or excuse me, gaining five faction credits, bring them up to a total total of twelve. Um, and then they're going to be moving a strike fleet from 1614 to the 1715 hex so that they can then explore in that hex and, if necessary, succeed at cost. So this one is moving to 1715. Uh, just so that I can clean this up in the future. I'm going to delete this row. Perfect. And now we're going to explore for them into the hex of 1715. As they're exploring with a strike fleet, they gain the benefit of their force, which is plus four. Um, this will still help me for this amount. Uh, 1715 is right down here. It is two hexes away, or excuse me, it is actually quite far away from a previously explored hex, isn't it? Uh, that was just the place where their strike fleet was. I think it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, it looks like, is the closest. Uh, so this is going to be the hardest difficulty exploration, um, which has a maximum difficulty of 14. So uh, they need a 10 on this roll, everybody, with a d10 plus four. Can they do it? Uh, no. Uh, so instead, they will take a d4's worth of damage, taking three damage to this uh, strike fleet out at 1715's hex, right here, uh, bringing them down to 5 HP. They do, however, succeed in their exploration. Uh, so um, D, let's make a note, D10 is 1 plus 4 equals 5. Failure, succeed with 3 damage. And then let's go roll the d6 to figure out how many planets they've made. Uh, five adds two planets. Everyone looks like uh, they've uh, discovered two, um, two planets this turn, who has done so. Uh, so let's roll both of those up and make me have to go through the alphabet again to figure out which letters are next. This planet looks to be interesting. So a W being the next planet to add in 1715. Let's add a row below. 1715. Planet AW with the mechanics tag of add one faction credit per turn. Along with a failed colony that was TL2 and has a corrosive invasive atmosphere with a variable cold temperature and a hybrid biosphere with the tags refugees and feral world. The second planet um, here. is a X and then that means a Y I believe should be going over here uh, has the military assets cost one less it is a tens of millions of population uh, it is TL4 with the airless atmosphere a cold temperature and a missable biosphere with the tags of pleasure world that is quarantined. Uh, the ruins roll was only a two so no ruins on this planet. Here are both of those uh, for you there. Uh, that 
does complete their goal, so that gives them plus two XP. Let's go grant that to them, uh, which is right here, bringing them up to six. Uh, Yes, Agumal Syndicate, that your Seize a Planet queue did complete. That's correct. So let's go give them control of that. I actually think I forgot when I renamed this to give uh, Ascent Planetary Government. There we go. And Planet Q should go to Agumal Syndicate. Perfect. I believe that wraps everything up from the faction turns. And yeah, you're right. Exploration for some people have uh, some people has some really good luck for some reason, and others don't seem to have the same luck. Quite disappointingly. Uh, but that is all right. Uh, cool. So uh, just so everyone is aware, uh, the Telus Auto progress is currently broken, so no automatically making progress on the terraforming clock as it has been uh, disabled due to the comet impact and has not been repaired yet. But um, that's all right. The assembled commonwealth have still proposed a new TCGI proposal. Uh, so this month uh, coming up for decisions is the round four of terraforming decision for making a tag choice. Uh, as a as there are only two options left, seagoing cities and trade hub, we are returning to simple majority uh, to select the the winning tag. So, excuse me, a tag will be selected uh, for certain this month on that vote. Uh, so long as you all don't tie the vote, and at which point I will have to figure out. Uh, how that is handled. So, sounds good. Uh, that's a, that'll be a, an interesting thing for uh, you all to vote on next time. Next time. Uh, yes, for anyone who completed seizes, uh, if you have planet names and system names um, for those systems, you can feel free to update me uh, for the lore stream, and we can change uh, the spreadsheet at that time. Let's see if the map has fixed itself, or if I need to go figure out what asset is breaking everything. Looks like I need to go figure out what asset is breaking everything. Uh, one of these assets says it's not on the thing, right? Okay, let me take just a moment to try and fix this. So there's a hidden row or a hidden column for is it sector object validation. No. Uh, oh, I know what it is. It is not sector object validation. I cheat. The planet map has a hidden column at the end where it does the calculation for what hex it is. And when I add new places, it does not automatically copy this down. So things on those worlds don't know that those exist. Perfect. Uh, and these two rows can go back to being hidden because they don't need to be visible. Goodbye. Uh, it may take a moment or two for the map to update, but in theory that should be the fix. Yeah, it's probably going to take... Uh, the Google API can take a couple of minutes to, to update, so we'll I'll check after the stream and hopefully that has, has fixed itself. Um, great. Well then, the only other things I'm aware of is uh, some dates. Uh, that you may want to, to make note of. Uh, so I believe I did announce in Discord that uh, we were looking at next weekend, the 18th, potentially having the lore stream. Um, at this point, it looks like I'm actually going to have a conflict uh, with that time. And so the lore stream will be moving at like 75% confidence. Um, I'll confirm for sure within the next day or two. I'm just... Uh, 
I, I have plans that may solidify on that day that I won't be able to, to navigate the lore stream around, and if they do, um, the lore stream will move. It will not move earlier, um, as that is obviously next week, so if anything, it moves back in time, giving people more time to make submissions, um, so just be aware that that is probably going to get delayed at this point in time. The other thing is the next uh, faction turn, so faction turn 13, will take place on October 9th. Um, I'd be out of town on the 2nd, and anyway, that's uh, a fairly short turnaround given the, the delay to being on the 11th of this month. So we'll be aiming for October 9th for the next faction turn, so uh, deadlines and dates will be posted uh, very shortly about those, um, but it'll follow the standard schedule. So yeah, I hope everyone had a fantastic Faction Turn 12. Uh, the spreadsheet stuff here all went well. The map uh, is mostly working. I will figure out what is wrong uh, from changes on the spreadsheet today, causing it to break shortly afterwards. But uh, thanks everyone for joining. I don't think I have any other announcements. I think I've covered everything. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. And... Um, have a great rest of your day. I'll leave you for the next couple of minutes with some nice uh, music as we uh, leave on out here. Thanks everyone. Have a fantastic day.